We thank the Lord. We thank the Lord. A gospel for today's liturgical service is from the gospel according to St. Matthew, and it is chapter 13, verses 1 to 23, inclusive. Um, it is Matthew 13, and verses 1 to 23, inclusive. The Lord Jesus spoke in parables. Reason being, two things. One, to fulfill prophecies, because it was written in the Old Testament that when the Messiah comes, he will open his mouth and he will speak in parables. So that was a prophecy about the Lord Jesus. So to fulfill the prophecies, he spoke in parables. Secondly, the reason why the Lord spoke in parables, because a parable is a story given to the audiences in a very simplified form or way to make it so easy for the E to hear it and at least to receive it and start thinking about what the ear has just heard. And why? To give the opportunity to the audiences to question what they heard in order to seek that mystery hidden in that parable. And that mystery is the kingdom of heaven. That mystery is the kingdom of heaven. And the reason why the Lord Jesus gives it in an indirect way. He doesn't come and directly tell you, you have to do this. Why? Because the Lord always respects your freedom of choice. The Lord always respects your freedom of choice. Since he is the creator, he created you on the basis of true divine love. And wherever there is true love, there is freedom. And since there is freedom, there is choices. Therefore, he gave you the will to choose to say yes or to say no. Today, governments are forcing you not to speak freely in the name of protecting people's integrity, protecting people's safety. In fact, it is an absolute direct enslavement of the human being which God created, not governments. Those, so your social media platforms. It is an absolute joke. They are thinking when you preach, maybe in your preach you are offending a certain group of people. They are worried about the safety net of people. Well, let me tell you, government, this fact which you know very well and you have allowed it to infiltrate on the entire social media platforms. What about the games little children are exposed to? They are destroying generations. What about pornography? Isn't that an insult? Hmm. But you see, when you speak the truth, all of a sudden, you are classed as a discriminative person. Wow. So the government is still trying to do, to place censorship on preachings and on talks in the name of democracy. Wow. Well done, governments. But we know where that comes from. It comes from one source, Satan. Because Satan cannot stand the truth. And this truth is not a word, it's a person called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Therefore, the world will go against the Lord. It has always been the case and will always be till the very end. Nothing has changed. 
it is of an old origin. Lord, I beg you to teach every government that is trying to play God on earth a lesson that they are nothing but a piece of dust. They are not God, never been, never will be, and there is only one true divine God, and it is you, Lord Jesus. It is you. So the Lord spoke in parables to respect humans' freedom. God respects human freedom and humans are trying to contradict God in the name of freedom. He spoke in parables. The parable of today, three things that every human being suffers with. Three things that every human fallen nature struggles with. Three things. The Lord began in 13 verse 1 and after he left the house, he went to the Sea of Galilee and then he went onto that boat and said, a sower went forth to sow some seeds. Some seeds fell on the wayside, one. Some seeds fell on rocky grounds or stony hard grounds, two. And some seeds fell amongst thorns, three things, wayside, rocky ground, and thorns. The seeds that fell on the wayside, he said, the birds of the sky came and devoured them. The disciples later on asked the Lord, they said, we didn't understand what you said. Can you please explain this parable? He said, the sower is the son of man. The seeds he, he, he went to sow is the word of God. He went to sow those seeds into people's hearts. And he said, the seeds that fell on the wayside, the birds of the sky devoured them. And he said, the birds is Satan. The birds is Satan. Three things humanity struggles with. The wayside, the rocky ground, and the thorns. The wayside is your will. The rocky ground is the word me, I am. And the thorns is the people around you in your life. And it can mean also pleasures and treasures of the world. But it is also people in your life, in your circle. The wayside, why does the wayside symbolize here the, your will? Because my beloved, the only way for me and you to, to walk in a particular way, I need to choose it. And in order to choose that way, I need to use my will. Without the will, there is no way. Without the will, there is no way. It is through the will I choose to walk this way or that way, forward or backward. It is the will that determines or gives me the ability to choose in which way to walk and in which way to live. But there is a problem. The Lord Jesus is saying, if you wish to discover the secrets of my kingdom, you need to give me your will in order for my will, I God, to be done and fulfilled in you. As the Lord taught this in the Lord's Prayer. Your will be done on earth, meaning humans, as it is done in heaven, means angels. So for you to come and discover and find out about my kingdom, the secrets of my kingdom, your will has to be replaced with my will. 
or more accurately put, your will has to go hand in hand with my will. Your will has to agree with my will. Your will has to be submissive to my will. Because the only way for God's will to be fulfilled in our lives, we need to choose freely to give our will to Him and say, Lord, let your will be done in my life, not my own will, but rather yours. However, when we choose to do things our way, when I decide to do it my way, not God's or anyone else's, what happens when I hear the word of the Lord, those seeds of wheat, when I hear the word of the Lord, they will fall on the wayside and the bird of the sky will devour it. Meaning, when I come to church, and yet I'm doing it my way, not God's. Whatever I hear, Satan will snatch it away from me. Because I haven't given my will to God, I'm still choosing to do it my way, not his. No matter how many times I hear the word of the Lord, Satan will devour it before it flourishes and gives fruits in my life. On that way, humans walk. On the very same way, animals also walk. On that way, cars drive, motorcycles, you name it. All walks of life walk on the way. This is what happens. When we do it our way, the will is very weak. The will is very weak. And when the will is very weak, we allow every man and his dog to enter our life and influence it. So so-and-so comes along and says a few words, I adhere to it. And then another way, someone else comes and says, let's go and I go. People determine my life. People navigate my life, not me. Because I did it my way, not God's. Who came and took over? Satan. When Satan takes over, that person will never realize their right hand from their left. That person will never realize light and darkness, what they look like. They will confuse them. They will call the light darkness and they will call darkness the light. And this is the way of the world, my beloved. This is the way of the world. They call the light darkness and they call darkness the light. What has been happening in recent times on a global level Nothing short of absolute pure evilness by the world. But the most dangerous and scariest way of all, when the church walks in darkness, that is the scariest of all. Because the church is supposed to be the light of the world. When I do it my way, the will is so weak, I allow people, animals, all walks of life to enter my way and influence my way. What happens when I do it my way, when I choose strongly to do it my way, it will lead me to the second point which humanity struggles with and that is the rocky ground. What is the rocky ground? The word me, moi, I am. The most dangerous 
of all is me. The most dangerous of all. What did the Lord say about the rocky ground? He said, when the seed fell on that rocky ground, it flourished quickly, but it withered as well because it was scorched by the sun. And it withered very quickly. Why? Because with time, a thin layer of soil accumulates on top of that rock. The wind blows the soil, the dust, and then it accumulates after a while. Because it's a very shallow ground and a very soft one, when the seed hits that soft, shallow ground, it flourishes quickly. But as the roots shoot out, they hit that rock beneath this, this surface of shallow soil. And when it hits the rock, it cannot penetrate through that rock. It stops there at that shallow level. When the sun rises, the, the sunbeam penetrates that shallow level of soil and burns the roots before giving fruits, withers away and dies. Some people will come. When they hear the word of the Lord, they are in rejoicing. They are fulfilled. They are so happy. They become so excited. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 2.5. Yes, sir. They shout. They yell. They jump. They sing. And shake the ground beneath them in Jesus' mighty name. And the moment persecution comes, and the moment... <laughs> Did you like that one? <laughs> I think I'm going to go to America <laughs> and be one of those prosperity preachers. Jesus said to me, Get a plane worth $85 million. <laughs> no ground at all. No ground at all. So, when persecution comes for the sake of the word of the Lord and that persecution comes and then scratches my self, scratches my name, my dignity, my authority, my rank, my position, the moment it scratches me, all hell breaks loose. No more Jesus. What happened? You were rejoicing when you heard the word first. He said, yes, as long as the word is tailored to my own way, I'll accept the Lord. But the moment I get kicked, punched, ridiculed, and deposed and thrown out, no more. I will never let nobody touches my dignity. Not even for the Lord's sake. Wow. See, me is extremely powerful. Very powerful. You want to test a person if they come to church for the Lord or for themselves? Take away the position from them. <laughs> Imagine someone like John the Baptist. What is so unique? What is so special about John the Baptist is one thing. He is of the Old Testament, yet the only one saw the Lamb of God, the real Lamb of God, not the symbol of the Lamb of God. Not symbolically, but he saw the true Lamb of God. So he is the only one of the Old Testament that witnessed the New Testament physically, literally. He was an eyewitness to the New Testament. But he was never baptized the way the Lord gave it to the disciples. Even He never. Yet, so unique about John the Baptist. In his peak of fame, and Jesus Christ is about to come into the scenes Nobody knows him. Nobody really cares that much. But yet John the Baptist, everybody held him 
so highly. When they came and said to him, the one whom you spoke about is trying to take your place. He's taking your followers away from you. He is snatching them away from you. Be careful, John. This Jesus of Nazareth is after your position. He's trying to be the famous one and push you away from the center of attention. John the Baptist said, well, it is only natural for him to do so because he is the groom and I am the groom's best man. The wedding is not about me. The wedding is about the groom. He is the groom. And I rejoice as the best man when I hear the voice of the groom. Wow. You need to follow him, not me. Amazing in absolute self-denial. So famous, so revered by the Israelite nation, so popular, the man of God, the prophet of God, Jesus of Nazareth, we don't even know his background, where he comes from, who he is, who the parents are, we don't know. But John the Baptist, yes, of course, everybody bows before John the Baptist. But John the Baptist bowed before Jesus Christ of Nazareth and said, I am not even worthy to undo the shoelace of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He denied the word me. He denied the word me to gain Christ. So when they tried to say that Jesus is after your position, he was glad. Jesus is after your throne, he was happy. When it is me, I will not accept not one word even from God himself. When me is so powerfully living in me, I won't even listen to God. I will be disobedient. The weak will leads me to me the rock, the stubborn, not the good rock, no, the bad rock that is stubborn, that, is, that says it is either my way or you hit the highway. Stubbornness will lead me to only one place, self-destruction. Stubbornness will only lead me to one place, 100%, self-destruction. A stubborn person that says it is either my way or nothing else will be left alone. They will destroy themselves. But there is a problem. The reason why the Lord warns us not to chase after me, 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 me. You know why? Because the third struggle is the thorns. People in your life. There are two kinds of thorns. One thorn is called a mountain. And one thorn is called a valley. What is a valley? The mountain turned upside down. The mountain turned upside down. That's a valley. One thorn is a mountain. What is mountain? Pride. Self-exaltation. Look at me. Is so that what girls do after they come out of the hairdressing salon? Oh, it's so soft. I like it. Well, I've got a longer hair. But I, just one thing. The hair is black, but the beard is white. <laughs> See, I'm still old-fashioned, black and white. <laughs> I don't like the color TV. I like the black and white. The mountain pride. 
What is valley? Hopelessness. Losing hope. So when I chase after myself, I'll be so self-centered on what people think of me. Everything to me is how people perceive me. So when someone comes along and says a nice word about me, I become a mountain, a big balloon, I'll fly high. Satan will devour me because what made the angel fall was pride. Pride, false pride. Big deal, someone said to me, you're a saint. I didn't become a saint. It was the saintliness that was in their heart that spoke. You're a saint. Hmm, whatever. And then someone comes along and says, you're a sinner. It was that sin that spoke in your heart. But the problem, you see, when I am so preoccupied with myself, then any and every word is scaled, is put in the scale and measured so accurately and deeply. So somebody says a nice word, I become a mountain, pride, Satan devours me. And somebody says a nasty word, I become a valley, lose hope and cry for myself. Why did they say that? Oh, I am bad, I'm this, I'm that, I start crying and I'm no good. I won't leave the room anymore because they said this about me. Even the donkey thought people were praising him on Palm Sunday. And he was told off by another donkey Listen, mate, the praising wasn't for you. Remember who sat on your back? His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. The praising was for him, not for you. So whether you are a pope, you're a cardinal, you're a bishop, the praising is not for you. Who do you think you are? The only thing is you are carrying Christ on your back and the Lord gave you the ultimate blessing to allow you to carry him and bring him to the world that is living in sin, in darkness, in ugliness, and in the poison of the old snake called Satan. So when people praise you, it's not you, it is the Christ that is in you. And when people tell you off as a leader, they have said it to your master before you, so why are you offended you are not the reason. It is Jesus of Nazareth. He is the reason. People will love you for him, for his sake. And people will hate you also for his sake. You want to just be glorified and forget about the suffering of Christ? Well, when you get married, you take the whole package, baby. She may be beautiful, but she nags, baby. Where were you? Where you doing? Like that guy was in the plane, 30,000 feet above the ground. And then he realizes he left the phone at home. He was saying, let me out. I'm going to be dead today. He left the phone with his wife. Well, you're not laughing. You're scared now. <laughs> when I focus on myself, I also focus on how people react to me. Very dangerous. A lot of times, people will say things they don't even mean it. And a lot of times, People will say things they don't even realize what they have said. Oh, we love you. Really? Do you? Do you love me? Do you? Do you? Do you want me? Do you? Do you? 
You know, it's so easy said than done. I love you. Do you know what this word entails? Do you know the depth, the width, the height of this word? No. But it's easily said, yet so difficult to live it. Do you love me? Truly? Well, let me see how you're going to stay loving me when I become a pain in your neck. Well, you still love me. Hmm. Elizabeth says yes. I don't know. The Lord says, if you want to come and discover the secrets of my kingdom, your will must be given to me and yourself must be given to me and the people around you need to forget about them and let me be your people I become them in other words I need to be first because this is my nature I am first I cannot be second I cannot be tenth I Jesus Christ will never accept it because my nature does not allow me to be anything but first and the last so there is no one before me there is no one after me if you are going to put anyone before me or after me then you have someone else as your God as your love and love is only given to God first then to people then to people The problem of the entire human race is they're trying to find happiness, joy, freedom their way. Doesn't work. It will never work. Because the day that comes, I become the creator of myself then I can do it my way. But I did not create myself in order to say I am free. Whoever created me is the one who is free to do as he pleases in my life. Now on an earthly level, parents are free in dealing with their children because parents created the children, not the other way around. But of course, when you are free in dealing with your children, it is according to the one who created you. Don't forget, because the one who create, created you, parents, is God. So if you wish to be free towards your children, then you need to let God to be free towards you, parents. Whoever created you has the full right to do as they wish in your life. But I'll leave you with this. Um, see, the disciples asked the Lord Jesus, why do you speak in parables? He said, because to you it is given to know the secrets of the kingdom, but to them it is not. To you it is given to know the secrets of the kingdom, but to them. Who is you and who is them? Because in verse 1 of chapter 13, Matthew 13, 1, he says, when he saw the multitude, so there was a multitude that came to listen to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord and Savior. Multitudes come to hear the word of the Lord. It's the same thing. Nothing has changed. When we read the Holy Gospel, it is the Lord Jesus speaking. Nothing has changed. The Lord is speaking. The multitude is listening. This is why, by the way, a piece of information. Whenever you want to come to church, and I pray you do that all the time. When you come to church, please, please, I beg you. I beg you with love and respect. Try and be in the church at least before the Holy Gospel is being read. Don't come late. 
Because when the Holy Gospel is being read, it is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the rightful owner of the church, is talking. Do you want to listen to him? Who are you visiting? Aren't you visiting the Lord? You're not coming for the bishop or the priest. Of course not. We are coming for the Lord Jesus. So when we come for the Lord, we need to come while he speaks, not after he walks away. So the Lord said, people will come. Multitude means all walks of life, different levels of education, rich, poor, educated, illiterate, all kind of people came. That's a multitude. They listened. He said, but to you disciples, it is given to know the secrets, but to them it is not. Why? When you read the book of Proverbs of King Solomon, you will see three words always going together hand in hand in the book of Proverbs. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. You'll find these three words together in the, especially in the book of Proverbs. Knowledge, understanding, wisdom. What is knowledge? Information. What is understanding? Comprehension. What is wisdom? Application. When we come to the Lord and He speaks, what are we receiving? Information, knowledge. We're receiving information. That's the first stage. He's talking, His word is coming through our ears. We are listening to the word we received knowledge, i.e. information. Some people will come to the Lord Jesus and stop at the level of information, knowledge only. To these kind of a Christians, the Lord will never reveal the secrets of his kingdom. Meaning, I came to hear the sermon, I came to the preaching, I listened to the word of the Lord, and then when I went out, I said, yeah, yeah, that was not bad, that was okay, no, it wasn't so good, you know, but I learned a couple of things. Well done to that guy, excuse me? That guy who has been yelling for the last two hours, being Bishop Murray, he wasn't yelling so you can say you're a good preacher or a bad preacher. He was yelling because the Lord is sending you his voice, his word, to receive the information. And through that information, you need to follow up with comprehension. So if you stood there and listened to the preach and walked out and said, he's a good preacher, you missed the hallmark. The Lord will never reveal to you nothing. But if you've received the information and then started thinking about it, asking questions about it, what I learned today, what I heard today, so many questions are being raised, I am going to find out the answers to these questions. Now when you begin the search for, to finding the answers to those questions, what do you become? Instead of a multitude, you move from that level to the discipleship level. You become a disciple of Christ. A disciple is the person that gave up on their comfort zone, that gave up on their pleasure sometimes, and given it to God. I can say you are disciples. Why? Because it's a long weekend and you could have been elsewhere. And please don't get me wrong, I'm not judging those who are gone on holidays or on a break. No, 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 no. They've been coming to church all the time. But what I'm saying, whatever is your comfort zone, I'm not talking about today and a long weekend, no. I'm talking about your entire life, every single day. Whatever is your comfort zone, when you give that comfort zone for the Lord and you become uncomfortable for him to be comfortable, now you're a disciple. You have paid a price to gain Christ's attention. If anyone says to you, there are things for free, they're lying. There is nothing for free. Buy one, get one free. <laughs> the biggest joke 
and he's got the price of the one for free in the first one. Buy one and get robbed by the second one. I need to put my glasses on. Laugh again. Now I can see. Oh man, I can see you. I can see clearly now. The glasses are on. These are my latest glasses, not frameless. Can <clears throat> There is nothing for free. You want the Lord to reveal certain things to you? You need to pay the price. Nothing's for free. For the Lord to save the world, he had to die. He had to pay the price. Yet he was sent by his heavenly dad. He came from heaven. Daddy sent him. But he said, my son, the only way for the for Adam and his descendants to be saved and come back to my kingdom, you must die, my son. There is a price to be paid for everything good given in return. Nothing is for free. Even the evil way is not for free. The price is you're a slave now. No longer free. You're a slave. When you move on to discipleship, now you've received the information, now you're trying to digest that information in order to understand the information, which is comprehension. You see, if I hear the word of the Lord and don't care about knowing what it means, Satan will devour it and just the way I walked in will be the same way I walk out. I came in empty, I'll leave empty. There will be no change in me. Some people say, I've been going to church for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. Nothing has changed. Well, let me tell you this, my dear friend. Do you know why you never changed? Because you never seek Christ. You were only seeking information about Christ. Because you were not ready to sacrifice for the Lord. You were not ready to give up on your pleasures for the Lord Jesus. You didn't pay the price. There is no reward. See, the Lord Jesus is not about a song I listen to or I sing. The Lord Jesus is not about a sermon I give. The Lord Jesus is not about a book I read. The Lord Jesus is life must be lived. Must be lived. Must be lived. We can't fake it. We can't act it. We can't pretend it to be. It's the truth must be lived. The world will never accept the truth. You know why? Because the world is all about one big massive stage, everybody acting on everybody else. Everybody fakes it. Everyone. In parliament. What you see on TV is not what happens behind closed doors. They're acting, Mr. Speaker. This is the world. The United Nations, none of them are united. <laughs> what a joke, what a joke, what, honestly. I'm, I'm changing the name. I'll change it. I'll wipe you all out. The ununited nations. And the hating each other nations assembly. Seriously. United. And the world. My daughter, my son. The young ones. Oh, please pay attention. 
I love you. You're my children. I'll die for you. And nothing touches you. I'll die for you. Don't ever, don't ever let the world bluff you. Don't ever let the world come and say, come on, let's have fun. It's a free country. These sons of the snake, these sons of Satan, get lost. I'll say get lost. There is no such thing as fun. There is no such thing as freedom. There is no such thing as I can do whatever I want. It is a lie created by Satan, invented by Satan. No one is free. No one. No one is free, including Satan. No one. So when they come and say, let's go out. It's a free country. You just turn 18. Have fun, brother. You can go into any club and put that ID, stick it in that security guard's forehead. We're going to have fun. And I'm going to experience life for the first time. My parents, who came from the Middle East, old-fashioned, suffocated me for 18 years. Today, I say to them, goodbye. And you go out, and you have fun, and let me see where that fun leads you. Absolute destruction, absolute poison, absolute annihilation of your true identity which God gave you. God gave you. I beg you. No one is free. There is a price tag for everything. Nothing is for free. Definitely Christ is not for free. He was given freely to save us. But there is a price tag. <laughs> so my beloved, the wayside is your will. Say to the Lord, let it be your will, not mine anymore. It is your way, not my way anymore. You are the way, the, meaning the only way. There is no ways. The world will say all roads lead to Rome. While not all, all roads lead to heaven. There is only one way that leads to heaven and you better get this right, my dear friend. There is only one way and that way his name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People that worship someone else outside of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, there are no ways to God except Jesus. So you get it church leaders? You better open your ears, your hearts, your minds, your souls, and come off that high horse of Satan and bow before your Messiah. And enough hypocrisy, enough fabrication, enough corruption, enough Judas Iscariot, enough. There's only one way to God. His name is Jesus Christ. So church leaders, get a life. And that life is Christ. And I feel good, baby. You see, after the big yell and shout, you punch in with a nice, lovely remark. Just to break the ice. I'm not angry. <clears throat> I'm just zealous for my Jesus. I'm not angry. This is not anger. This is holy anger. I, I'm allowed. Ra, ra. The way. Say, Lord, let it be your will, not my will. Let it be your way, your way, not my way. The Lord came and gave us his way to replace our way. The rock, me, 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 stubborn. The Lord says, let it be not you, but me who lives in you. Let it be not you, but me who lives in you. Give your life to Christ and let the living Messiah be you, no longer you. The rock is gone. The thorns, people, prestigious life, pleasures, treasures. Let people be me. Let me be your family. Let me be your friend. Let me be your father, mother, brother, sister, everything to you. And let me, me be your kingdom. 
your pleasure, your, your treasure, your pleasure. Let Jesus be, not anyone. Then you'll end up with the good ground. When the seed fell on that good ground, flourished and gave fruits, 160 and 30. The good ground, my heart was the wayside, was the rocky ground, and was the thorns. All of them were in my heart. The blood of the Lamb of God cleansed this filthy heart, purified it, made it holy, made it a place worthy for God to dwell in. He took away the wayside, he took away the rocky ground, he took away the thorns and gave me the good soil in order to be receptive of the seed, i.e. the word of God, to be planted in, the, in this good soil, to flourish and give a hundred, sixty, thirty. But one thing, my beloved, the Lord here was talking about his beloved church. It will begin with hundred, but in the end of times, it will be a failure, thirty out of a hundred. When I began with my 12 apostles, it was a hundred out of a hundred. But in the end of times, she will only get 30 out of a hundred in the exams of the end of times. Because in the end of times, my church would have walked away from me again. But I'll remind my church from the very beginning before the end comes, I appeared at the River Jordan, Jordan at, the, by, at the age of 30. I appeared at your failure. When everybody failed, Christ showed up. When the church is in turmoil, Christ is on his way back, fixing the church. Amen? So don't ever lose hope. But please, Sons and daughters, your friends, call you, say, let's go clubbing. Just do it the Aussie way. Nah. Nah, mate. We need to pray for the Middle East. We need to pray for our beautiful Lebanon and the people of Lebanon our beloved people of Lebanon. We need to pray for our beloved, both people of Israel and Palestine. When you, when you chase the world, this is what you get. There is never going to be peace in the world because the one who is in charge of the world is the one who is the very reason for division, murder, destruction, Satan. So if the world thinks that they can come up with peace, that peace is absolute deception because Satan rules the world, no one else. And Satan will never give peace. Why? Because he doesn't have it. The day he lost his creator, God, he lost his peace. The only source of peace is the king of peace, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the only source. But we pray. For whatever reason there is out there, that gives them the right to destroy and kill and, and blow up. We pray that the Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God in nature and one God in essence, we pray for this peace to be bestowed in every heart. My heart goes out to every innocent child that lost parents. My heart goes out to every mom and dad that lost children, buried their children. This is unbearable pain, unbearable suffering. To see a child left 
without parents, that is an absolute murder. To see parents left with no children, families wiped from the face of this earth, there is nothing more painful than this. My heart truly goes out. I don't care what your religious background is, what your race is, what your color. I don't care what your nationality. We are all equal when it comes to humanity. We are all the same. We need to love one another, respect one another, and be there for one another as far as the human level is concerned. My faith is mine. That is for me. I'm not the judge, God is. But as humans, when I see humans suffer, when I see children cry, when I see parents being destroyed by losing their loved ones, this I cannot and will not accept. I pray for peace to be bestowed between the Israelite people, the Jewish people, and the Palestinians, our beloveds. And I ask the Prime Minister of Israel, Netanyahu, Mr. Netanyahu, to reconsider And all the countries, Iran, Syria, we're trying to conquer what? Conquer what? A land, a country. That land and that country at the end will be our graveyard. No one escapes death. Everyone will die sooner or later. What are we killing each other for? And those agendas being done behind closed doors in secret, let me tell you, nothing is secret to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Nothing. I pray for peace in Israel and Palestine. I pray for peace in Lebanon. I pray for peace in Syria. I pray for peace in the entire Middle East, in every country. Pray for America. Look what is happening in America as well. I pray the Lord chooses the right person for the White House. I pray the Lord chooses the right person for the White House. Pray for the church, my beloveds. Whether it's Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, pray, 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 my beloveds. Pray, my beloveds. Love one another. Forgive one another. Bless one another. Help one another. Seek the Lord. You will find peace. You will find everything. Believe me. I pray the whole world find Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They have no idea what they're missing on. They have no idea. The moment you find Jesus Christ of Nazareth, all glory to his holy and mighty name, you are fulfilled, content. You will seek no one else, nowhere else. So whether I live in Australia or in Iraq, whether I live in the Middle East or in Europe or in Asia or in Africa, in America, in Canada, wherever I'm living, it's all the same. When I find the Lord, wherever I go, the Lord is there. He is the never changing God. I am fulfilled. I am content. It is not the place that gives me freedom. It is Jesus Christ who, is, who does. It's not the place, it's the Lord. Seek the Lord Jesus. Believe me, you will not fight anymore. You will not kill anymore. You will not destroy anymore. Jesus Christ will teach you one thing. L-O-V-E, all capital letters. 
Because that's who he really is, love. Amen.